but I agree with him 100%. Let's jump on into the drafting phase for game number three. We got Keep Best Gaming on the blue side, we got Team Lil Gun on the red side, and we're seeing something a little bit different already. The Nolan and Kaja for Keep Best, along with the Angela Arlet for Lil Gun. Nice to Mustafa. You guys have worked with the other casters. How was how is it? How was the experience working with someone else? <laughs> I'm just gonna say, man. You know, when we came in today, I was like, man. After all these years, we finally get to share our desk together, and I hope it happens again. <laughs> <laughs> I personally rate uh, Sirius Fell as my favorite. Really? Yeah, Law Fell is my least favorite because he was kind of rude. Oh, and then well, Law Fell yeah. is somewhere in the middle. I'm a middle. Wait, no. You are a middle. At least you're not a top or bottom, right? You're a sandwich. Oh, that is pretty delicious. I'm not even going to say what you guys think I'm going to say. Right now, look, looking at the draft here. At, uh, they actually got Nolan. Yeah, Nolan. Yeah. But Nolan is one of those heroes where it can be really good and really bad very, very fast. Because Nolan has very good early game. But if... if uh, What's his name? The guy that jumps around whenever someone else dashes. Fovius. If Fovius gets picked up, then there's a way to fight against this uh, Nolan. And if Nolan doesn't have a good early game, he's not going to have a good game in general. That is true. Fovius is still open as well. And we have to note that Team Lil Gun will have first pick once the bans conclude. So Keep Best Gaming are going to need to keep an eye on that. For now, with the ban on Yu Zong, do you think this will be a... EXP Arlet instead. Could be. But the fact, too, that Lil Gun has the Valentina now and the Angela, which it's a combination we talked about before, you know, early on today even, this could be already a strong <laughs> start for them for the first three picks. But even for KBG, I like that the fact that they decided to go with the Kaja. Hmm, the Kaja pick going to be effective here. But I do kind of wonder what exactly they picked it up for, right? Normally, you would see like a really... I know oh, There's Burst on the Nolan as well as the Brody. So I kind of feel like ah. they're trying to force some uh, some engages on the side lane. So less of a direct counter to a Exactly. Pick. It's yeah. more it's, of a it's general a setup. It's a proactive kind of Kaja. Okay. I, mean, I feel like we haven't seen that in a while. It's kind of refreshing. Yeah. Um, we basically see the same combo with uh, Kaja and Carry, where the win condition is to... Make sure one lane is empty, and then having three people on the board, and then the Kaja as well as the carry trying to push that one ah. lane, and you can basically burst down anyone. Yeah, it would force them to have to send more than one person exactly, to exactly, actually yeah. have to defend it. So, so you will win Lord, or you'll end the game. Pretty good, pretty good. It's Brody this time instead of carry, but that honestly still works pretty well. Yep. And we'll see whether or not Keep Best Gaming can go with that. But now with the potential Angela Boxia combination, could this mess with Nolan's ability to start getting snowballs early? Hmm. They okay, if they have the Kaja to land the divine judgment on who he needs to, and then you can snowball the Nolan, then that can get scary, right? I mean that's something there. Wow, oh, interesting. Farsa. By the way, debut pick for the Farsa. Wow. That's interesting because at one point Farsa was, you know, dominating yeah. the mid lane and now she's just I should have just cosplayed the Farsa. Yeah. I was yeah. already covering my eyes. You can just say that you were cosplaying Farsa. Wait, wait, wait. Oh yeah, I was. It's just that Farsa has a longer face. I was cosplaying Farsa. It's just her, her face is like really long. She has small ah, paper. Okay, okay. I see. I see what you mean. So like yeah, that was your best attempt, you know, because of like I try my best physical limitations. Exactly, yep. exactly. Technically, an actual far side cost. My lit. problem here is I'm worried. Even if the Kaja can catch anyone, the damage won't be enough, unless it's the Angela or the um, Valentina. But even at that, the Boxer can just roll in and then stun you and make your engage not worthwhile. Mm. So it's kind of like I see the idea, but honestly, Lil Gun has a lot of ways to deal with it. Yeah, especially now that they have the one one as well. Yes, it's kind of weak to the to the Kaja pick, but against everything else, it's very going to be very difficult for Keep Best Gaming to actually keep this gold laner in check here. So I think it's a pretty smart way to finish things off before we head on into the land of dawn. Nice uh, final thoughts. Whose draft do you like more? Oh man, I like what KBG's trying to do here. I, I think there's a huge snowball potential in it. Anytime we see a Nolan, but. 
Honestly, I think they're going to have a lot to deal with across from, especially now that you have an Angela and then the Valentino. Once again, that combination is quite deadly. What KBG doesn't want is if Lil Gun just guns it straight to their jungle. Mm, and that is something that they are traditionally known to do. So we'll figure out whether or not Keep Best Gaming can keep the ball rolling and secure a victory here in their final match of the wildcard group stages. Or if Team Lil Gun, they'll do it again with the reverse sweep. Welcome back to the Land of Dawn for the last time for the one card group stages, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hope we have an exciting game to close things off today. Right now we can see that it looks like Lil Gun, they're not gonna go inside the jungle of KBG. So Sima can farm up pretty well, but again, this composition has a lot of pickoffs. And when it comes to pickoffs, you have to choose the right targets. Because, again, there's a lot of targets that you don't want to hit. You don't want to hit Aiza, you don't want to hit Zexora. If you can get... Honestly, at this point, Ethan is probably the best. At this point, yes. Slowing down the level 4. But I think once you're able to get some farm... Oh, oh already though. Simba going to take quite a bit. This is the... I guess you could say, in a way, it's a downside of any of these heroes that kind of fit that role where Nolan is, right? You are quite squishy, and you have to rely on being able to follow up from your roam. And that's what I'm saying. Like, the way we've seen Tides play throughout the course of, you know, just the group stage alone, oh, sometimes he's had a hard time, just like now, actually. Gonna flicker her out. We'll be able to survive for now. Now Simba looking for his own kill. Ethan, he quite low, it. he gets it. Fracture there as well. They get the first blood, but he goes down next. Yeah, I don't think that's worth it, though. Yeah. You're trading the jungle for the roam, that's just not a good sign at any point, considering that the turtle's coming up pretty soon, too. When I, when I was saying focus on Ethan, that's not what I thought how it looked like. That's what he went for. That's what he went for, but, you know, it's like... Your instructions were not specific enough. Yeah. It's nice being a, as an analyst today. I, I nailed a lot correct, mm -hmm. but not the way I thought it would look. It's basically like, like getting your wishes granted by a genie. Exactly, yeah. Perf perfect analogy. Analogy? Correct? Yeah. yeah. Analogy. Metaphor? Yeah, I think, I think, yeah analo metaphor? analogy, yeah. metaphor. Actually, I've always wondered what the difference between those two words is. For now, though, Ethan in trouble again. Oh, Ethan going to get hunted down here. Simba, but will not be able to get it unless LMU can do something about it. Going to be able to land that. Gets the stun off as well. Still, Simba goes in. They trade the objective, though. We saw this from the previous game. So they're on the hunt for these kills, but again, I'd love to see them contest for the objectives. Final Slash gonna be used, Aizen. Fancy footwork, meanwhile, they get the flicker out. That's the heart guard, too, for Forbid from Ethan, but it looks like they're just gonna call it off. My question is, because I've been saying a lot of things that Keep Best Gaming have been doing, can I go to China? I don't do see I have why a, not. Do I have a China brain? I am not going to answer that. <laughs> All right, fair enough. For now, Simba in trouble. I think Simba might have to go and rely on the team here. ZX Aura gonna be in trouble. Now Simba, oh, getting really close there. Ethan was there to help him out with the waves, but no one goes down. And yeah, that looked like it could be a bit greedy of Simba for a moment. Yes, you got the catch, but your health is so low. No reason for you to stick around. Almost got punished for it, but he's still okay for now. Key best gaming, still maintaining an okay foothold in the game. But we can see Forbin now holding on to that Divine Judgment. That means that Lil Gun as well will have pickoff potential. I want to see Tides being more proactive because now he has the tools for it. He even, he even has the flicker, but again, it's all about targeting here. And I kind of feel like Lil Gun understands that as well. That's why they're pre-positioning themselves around the gold lane because Key Best Gaming, that's their best bet. And that's where Team Lil Gun is making sure that there will be some kind of counter engage. Well, right now, Tides gonna be able to go. Ooh. He gets final slash, flickers out. Zexora wants the kill though, and Aizen goes in, but Zexora gets that one. They're happy with it. They know the turtle's up in just a bit, so we'll see how the positioning goes. Meanwhile, see you working on that bottom lane. He's able to get a bit of gold shield down there. Zexora now in trouble again, but here comes the hard guard. And that's the combo we were talking about, right? The Angela Maxia. So hard to break through the defenses of such a combo. And Angia? Angia? You're trying to combine Boxala? it. Boxala? 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 That sounds weird enough to be a thing. It's, the, it's the Boxala combo. I guess it's not bad. 
All right, we'll see how they go about this one. Again, gonna be able to use it, still fighting for the turtle. There's Forbid, jumps in, it's ZXOR that gets to the turtle. This time, Simba in trouble. Couple ends away and he finally falls. And they back off from that. Team Little Gun, again with the objectives. Here's the thing, I don't see Nolan as a, oh, Bayback finds God, yeah. Yeah, Bayback, uh, oh, Bayback's he... gonna try to get that crossbow tang off. He's almost there, he's got it. Gets the kill as well. Doesn't need the team even there. Yeah, Guardian actually flickered and uh, let Bevex hit that final weakness point there. So that was a big mistake. I Like, yes, you want to flicker back into the safety of your tower, but you also got to make sure about angles when you're facing a hero like a one one That's the an, an, an experience rearing its ugly head once again to keep best gaming. Right now, keep best gaming, and this Nolan is not working out so well, and this Boxer is doing what he's supposed to do, going inside the jungle and trying to have a big... It's hard, just goes back in. Yeah, still gonna be fighting it out. Not sure if he's gonna be able to get that kill. Looks like he backed away enough, but he did lose the purple buff. That purple buff gonna oh. be very important for Nolan. Tides. Not sure if they're gonna pull this one. He goes in with his own divine judgment. Tides will be the one to fall. Do they still want to find it out? It looks like they do. Oh, Bevex going to get stunned. Gets the crossbow tank off in time. LMU going to be the one in trouble. Feathered airstrike comes down, but Bevex just fine. And for Bid oh. finishes off LMU as well. Literally the exact moment the projectiles of the torn apart memory would have collided. The crossbow attack came out. Oh, Isaac jumping in with a flicker. Gets Simba and flexes on him too. Yeah. 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 E e either way, it's not sure what's going on now. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Did you lose? Yeah. I, I, I couldn't hear what you guys were saying. Yeah. But either way, it's right now, Team Lil Gun, they have a substantial lead. 4,000 goal lead, in fact. And now Team Lil Gun, they're already in prime position to kind of let the map shape however they want it to look like. Because keep best gaming, when you have a Kaja, you want map control because you want the advantages of those bushes because you can surprise opponents, but if you don't have control, then it's going to be hard to surprise. And as I say that... Yeah, they're going to go ahead and divine judgment. Aizen, he uses the final slash. Zimba fell, though. So with that, still in the bottom lane, they're going to put the pressure there. Another objective secured here for the hands of ZX Aura. And right now, it just looks like KBG can't do anything anywhere across the map. Team Lil Gun in complete control. Ooh. There was some damage. Ethan has the respect, though. Gadian gets something, Ooh. and he gets another. Finally able to get some punishment in the direction of Team Lil Gun here. Ethan Webex felt a little bit too confident to dive that and glossed their lives as a result. Let's see if they can get more here. Simba has to be careful about how he approaches some of these fights, some of these skirmishes. But you know, as I was saying, KBG struggling to find something. At least they get a double out of that. But still, we're in a similar situation where things are falling mm. apart quickly. No wonder the damage was there. He completed the Hepsis Hep first. I kind of feel like, yeah, the Malefic Roar is going to be there. So the damage coming in from Keepest Gaming is there. So it's not all hope is not lost. All they really need is to set something up for God Yang. And then once he has that, try to get oh. through the turret. So Tide's gonna jump in, grabs the target, Ethan's out of here. Good use of the Divine Judgment with the Flicker. So at least they get that advantage, but what can they do with it? For now, they're gonna be able to make sure the rest of them get out without too much damage taken. Unfortunately, I'm not too sure if that's gonna translate into too much more map pressure, but hey, they did target Ethan. This, at this point, that's interesting. If they get a kill, I kind of feel like they should go for the side leads. Try, because when you have the side leads, you have a lot of bushes to work with, and then you can do that basically much more. Because even if you get the mid, it's going to be pretty good, but it's going to be very difficult. So, keep best gaming. After getting a kill, they need to get at least one turn. If you get at least one turn, then they're at the right spot. Yeah, right now, they're still going to be putting pressure on this side of the jungle. Hard guard already going to be used. So they used that before this Lord take. We'll see how they want to play this one out. KBG has that information. They have a go signal as well. Tides doesn't have the flicker though. So we'll see if he actually plays around with a Divine Judgment. And not sure if the resources will be enough. Oh. Aizen does spot out Simba in the push, but ooh, oh. that's weird movement, but yeah. he's okay for now. I think that was the 
the enhanced auto attack, it accidentally locked on to the to the Arlen, so he dashes straight towards him. That but yeah, bad. that was a mistake, yeah. For now, um, they gotta avoid making mistakes like that. But following up on what you were mentioning earlier, LaFell, uh, about like, Yep. Being able to win out those side lanes yep. once you get a kill, I feel yep. like defense might be a bit oh. too afraid to do that. We're gonna go ahead and focus on Aizen. He gets Divine Judgment. They're looking for the kill still. They're gonna jump in here. Godyang trying to do something, but he went down so quickly. Now Simba on the hunt. He's on the run. They're gonna go for it, but he can't get away further. See who falls off on the other side of the map. All of this happening here while Lord makes its way topside. But they almost got two turns down bot. So again, it's 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 a it's same idea as I was saying, trying to get one side going. If they could push just a little bit more, they could have gotten that. But I think they're depending a bit too hard on numerical advantage right Ooh. now. You can see how defensively they have to play. The moment Team Lilgun dives in aggressively, Keep As Gaming knows they don't have the tools to be able to respawn. They gotta be the ones starting these fights, and to do that, they have to be generally together. See if they can pull something off here. Again, it is only the first Lord. Quick work of it, finally goes down. But it just looks like, like Team Lilgun is happy with what they can get, even if it's just these buffs. For okay. now, it doesn't look like the game is going to end quite as quickly as game two, but it's still going down that same sort of avenue here. What what does Keep Best Gaming need to do? Catch someone off. The moment, I would say, Arlet or Zexora uh, dives a little bit too heavily inside, pull them in, kill them. That's step one. Oh. Step two, tight. This might be oh. the moment they're All looking right. for. They're going to go ahead and divine judge on Zexora, but the rest of the team, Aizen making his way as well. Final slash. Keeping them at bay, ZXOR finally goes down. The rest of Little Gun on the chase. CU might get caught out once again. He's not going to be able to get away from Bebex. He just waits patiently for his death. He'll be the one to go down. Can I say this is one of my best days of being an analyst, of calling out things before they happen? Yeah. They got a kill on ZXOR and then they kited. It. it literally happened exactly as you said. Like the moment it was playing out, I was definitely starting to believe that you actually do have some kind of future vision. Oh. But not sure if that's going to be enough. The bottom inhibitor just falls for free, basically, to team a little gun, because there's not enough bodies to protect it down here. And on the top side, you have Simba up there just trying to cut that in, but Zexor is going to have the heart guard from Ethan, and now he's going to get chased down. Really nowhere for him to go as he gets taken down in the top lane. Trying to do something for his team, but ultimately, again, he's down before the Lord comes up. Okay, looking at the top side, almost getting that turret. So I kind of feel like Keep Best Gaming, they're doing a good enough job of controlling the side. So before that, Tides. Tides, can he get away here? He's going to flicker out. So able to stay alive, but yeah, this just looks like it's going to be another Lord here for Team Lil Gun. Yeah, that means that they don't have to be wary of the Flicker Divine Judgment anymore. And even with it, Keep Best Gaming just cannot leave their base right now. Earlier, Simba tried to do so. Probably the wrong timing to do it with, though, considering he is the jungler. Okay, but either ways, right now, 8,000 gold deficit. Here's the thing that we haven't seen a lot, which is Farsa. Farsa should be able to clear the minions oh. Oh, pretty steadily. Well, that was weird. Interesting flicker from forward mid. Um, Might have wanted to try something there, but mid, <laughs> or he just like did he just change his mind mid flicker? <laughs> Could have, but we'll just ignore it for now because Lord just making its way down the bottom. It's up to KBG to do Ooh. something. There's the final slash. And see you make quick work of in the backside. They go Eisen keeping them at bay. Hard guard on Bebex, and he's just unleashing Ooh. with a crossbow of Tang Ooh. into Ooh. the base. He goes. Still working on it, and that's going to be a Team Lil Gun will win the series. In a flashy style, our representatives from Mongolia are able to secure the reverse sweep again and secure their position as the number one team in Group B. Keep Best Gaming, they've done their best. They've shown us the potential of China, a brand new team with very little experience. Who knows where time will take them? But hey. for now, Team Lil Gun moves on to the crossover matches. They were able to win one game. That's true. It's either Keep Best Gaming was able to push Lil Gun or it's just a Lil Gun thing. Lose the first game, win the rest.
Yeah, again, I, I almost caught it, but that was around, what, the 14, 15 minute mark? So another relatively quick game here. Mm -hmm. Not as fast as game two, but still very clean, very calculated. This is very much turning out to be a little gun thing. You lose that game one, you gather the information, you adjust, you do exactly what's needed. It's freaky, it's terrifying, but it's effective. So let's just throw it up onto the stage with our host to interview the winning team. All right, so Lil Gun just won the last match for today. All right, so congratulations, guys. First of all, you guys will be advancing further to our crossover match tomorrow. How are you guys feeling? Yeah, we feel really good. You guys yeah. feel really amazing. Yeah. All right, so tomorrow you guys will be meeting Nightmare Esports, am I right? Yeah. How uh, ready are you to actually meet Nightmare Esports? Because Nightmare Esports gave out a really, really good game and a really, really good fight this wild card stage. Yeah, I saw them and we will uh, prefer so good for the tomorrow's match, yeah. Okay, so you guys are feeling amazing right now. You guys are feeling good for tomorrow's match. Okay, I want to ask. This entire wild card, Lil Gun tend to do a lot of reverse sweeps. Yeah. What happens on the first game? Are you guys like not ready yet? Are you guys not fired up yet? What's happening? Mm, I don't know. It's course. Maybe it's course. Oh, it's a curse. Yeah, maybe. We just always lost the first game and reverse sweep. Yeah. I see, I see. That second and third game was a really, really fast reverse sweep too, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... This entire wild card, which team you felt as if it was the hardest to go up against? Um, I guess maybe uh, Umbrella is hardest. Umbrella was the hardest? Why? Um, maybe their feeling style is a little bit aggressive like us and it's just a little bit hard for us. Oh, I see. Okay, also, Ethan just broke a record here in the wild card. Um, Ethan is the first player to achieve 100 assists in the wild card stage. So, who would you say is the MVP of Lil Gun? Um, today's match? Uh, overall, in this wild card. Um, maybe Trix Sara. Oh, why would you say so? Uh, he's really, really so good. Yeah. He's literally so good. Okay, so before I send you guys off, I know it's late and you guys just finished a 2-1 series. What do you guys want to say to your fans watching you guys and supporting Lil Gun's journey all the way in Mongolia? Um, thanks for everyone and thanks for believing us. Yeah, that's it. All right, thank you very much. And once again, guys, a round of applause because they will be making it to the crossover stage tomorrow to go up against Nightmare Esports. I'm pretty sure it's time to throw it back to the casters to know what happened in this reverse sweep series. Casters, take it away. Thank you very much to Rose and congratulations to Team Lil Gun for emerging as the top team in Group B of the M5 Wild Cards. I went into this tournament predicting that it would be uh, Team SMG and Lil Gun going through right now. That's looking pretty good, but uh, I probably should not speak too soon. As of now though, <laughs> We're going over to our MVP screen. It's going to be Aizen for this game. 1-0 and 10 on that Arlet. Yeah, and I do think... I mean, we were talking while they were doing the interview. I think it is a raccoon screaming in front of their jersey. That's really good. I want one. I want a raccoon screaming. They should, they should sell their merch. I they wonder what the backstory of that is. What if they just say they just like raccoons? I mean, it's a good enough backstory. We would you accept it, Naisu? I would. We should talk about Aizen, no? He was great. It was amazing. Okay, here's the thing. I love Arlets that know how to channel their final slash and then flick a forward. It sounds like a common thing, and it is. But, yeah, I have nothing else to follow up with. I just like that. No, it's flashy. It is cool. It's flashy. Also, yeah, yeah, it's flashy. It looks cool, but it also works great for a lot of these lineups. It's called the final slash. If you say it fast enough, it's flashy, you know? So I think it's a pretty good combination. And it's always fun to look at. The way that it displaces people is very effective. But of course, 
we get to see those moments again here in the highlights brought to you by Grab Unlimited with Team Lilkan just very systematically dismantled Keep Best Gaming. Yeah, again, they said that they have a curse of losing the first game. I wonder how that works for a best of five. Because <laughs> that's what they, Ooh, they're, they're going to do. That's right? true. Right? Are they going to lose their first two games and then win the rest? Or just lose one and then they'll win three. We're gonna find out tomorrow. Right, like this is a discussion that I mean I know the highlights is playing, but No no, this is important. This is important. If Derek Curse is losing the first game, how does it look like in the best of five? How does it look like in the best of seven? I still stand by my theory that Wait, the So should you in, should you let Lil Gun win the first game so that you win the series? Okay, now that actually opens up a different can of worms. That's trying to counter the curse. Counter the like it counter the win condition. Yeah, that's their win condition. You could steal their win condition because if you let them win the first game, then you have lost the first game. People and you can reverse sweep. People usually say like, "Hey, isn't that throwing?" No, 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 no. It's not throwing. It's strategically losing first and then winning later. I don't, I, I don't have a name for it. I'll, I'll figure it out, right? But you, you, you guys, you, you can guys, figure it out. You guys get what, what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Naming things is hard. It's okay. It's understandable. But the highlights definitely showed how the game went. It's the boomerang. <laughs> you, at first you throw, but then you'll get it back. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm a genius. It actually they, works pretty just well. Just do I can't the boomerang. Admit. All right. So Team Lil Gun are the masters of the boomerang strat now. Raccoons can use boomerangs. No. <laughs> oh. I don't think so. Do uh, you know raccoons that can use boomerangs? I mean. I'm pretty sure a Rocket Raccoon can. I guess. Does right? it count if it's a single, like, raccoon? Out I, don't of even, the I don't even know how, well, I guess, how do we end up on raccoons. Okay, just imagine... Because of their jersey. If r raccoon is Captain America. What? And then you just throw your shield and you get it back. All right. That's, that's the boomerang. Okay. But you guys get the boomerang thread, right? No. Maybe, I, I don't need. You can explain it to me later. Yeah. For now, unfortunately, there's no boomerangs in the item build. So I told you. By the way, look at the time. Thirteen fifty-eight. You told this off screen. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even remember. But, but, I, I'm but, gonna be honest. No, with because you. it said below fourteen minutes. Oh. And it's thirteen fifty-eight. And that's, what did I say about the second game? That's a building. What did I say about the second game? Off screen. Yeah. Ten minutes. Naisu is the. The hidden analyst. He has actually been really accurate, huh? He's coming you know, for Wolf's job. No, it's only because I work with, you know, some of the some very uh, great analysts. You're having a tough time describing me, really? Yeah. Is that <sighs> not describing you? Are you not saying you're a great analyst? It took him a long time. That was a pause. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe he's talking about Rashi. I don't know. You have been working with Rashi, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, I think it's about time to start talking about the players again. It's the last match, guys, of the group stage. Let's highlight a little bit of what's happened here. Because Team Lil Gun has been fairly consistent. Yes, they lose that first game, but after that, it's just a completely different team altogether. So if they can keep up this kind of momentum, it could really catch their opponents off the guard. And if they only need to lose that first game, then they will be absolute powerhouses in best of fives and best of sevens. I would say the only problem here is really the Farsa, because there's a reason why not a lot of people are picking up the Farsa, because Farsa was really strong in a very heavy marksman meta. Right. Uh, marksman meta. And it's good against the 1-1, one -one, but it's not good against the Baxia, against the uh, Valentina, and it's not good against the Arlet. So I kind of feel like there's a reason why this hero hasn't been picked, because it's not really about the distance.